King Spin yeah. Beats is in the building. <laughs> What's up, brother? I think this is like our first time ever talking. Like, yeah. Honestly, we never really hopped in a call or anything. I mean, I'm always pretty busy, so Yo. I'm glad we can finally do this. You know, that's one thing about you, bro. You are busy. You stay consistent with everything that you do. So, I mean, it's good to have you on a call finally. I mean, this is better than a call. It's a podcast. Get to right, know you. exactly. We can just bounce back and forth for sure. Yes, sir. But, bro, man, thanks for blessing up her radio. Finally get to do this. Um, we're going to go over a lot of cool things today. But first thing first, bro, how are you? How are the vibes? I'm doing good. It's been a pretty chill day. Um Made a few beats this morning. Um, just working on a new project right now that's in the works since I just dropped the um, the Solitudism along with the EP uh, Synthetic Farm. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, um, one thing I'll say for all the viewers that are going to listen later is, so, he, you just dropped this tape four days ago, Solitudism, mm-hmm. and I haven't heard it yet. Looking forward to it. i um, going to make time for it. But I did get to listen to your Synthetic Farm EP. And, right. bro, let's, just, let's talk about one thing at a time. Because, man, you have so many masterpieces, bro, that I want to go <laughs> over. But let's talk about Synthetic Farm. What was the, the reason behind that drop? And what were your, your goals with that EP? Okay, so basically that was just going to be like just a little SoundCloud exclusive thing for people who have been um, following me on there and everything. The whole idea behind that project is it's, it's kind of a whole different sound than I've done before because I kind of wanted to create something like almost like Southern rappy kind of, but like it's, it's also a message. Um, it's about, you know, just drug use in America, like the opioid crisis and everything. Um, if you listen to some, I, I added some like samples from shows, movies, whatnot, um, and even like interviews with people who have went through that kind of shit. Mm. Um, just kind of sprinkled in a couple of tracks, um, and yeah, it's basically poking at that and how we're kind of like this synthetic farm in America, where pills are just handed out left and right to people. Mm. And um, I think because I'm a big advocate for like uh, medical marijuana and whatnot. Um, because I think it's just a way better alternative as someone with addictive genes. Um, I think, you know, we should encourage people to stay away from pills um, that shouldn't be on them like me. Um, So like, that's kind of where the inspiration for that project came from. Um, One thing that I can say off that too, is, you know, I, I agree with the being pro marijuana, you know, I don't smoke anymore, but dude, it has so much more, it has so much more benefits than any yeah. pharmaceutical drug can give you. Exactly. Like, I mean, I think it's, it's definitely, it helps some people like, like just like pills, you know, like some people it works for them, which is great. If it's working for you, that's good. But a lot of the side effects can be really bad. And if mm-hmm. you take them away from them it can be even worse. And I've noticed with um, me using it in a, in a medical context, uh, marijuana it fucking just, helps very much with a lot of shit and I don't have that addictive feeling. Um, and I, I can keep it limited perfectly and use it when I need it. It's just, it's nice. I'm a big advocate for that stuff and I've been looking into careers with that. So, um, Hey, yeah. I like that. That's good, bro. Looking for like a career in the, in the kind of fields that you enjoy. Mm-hmm, oh. Exactly. Like I want to do beats on the side, but also my main passion, obviously, like it always will be. Um, but like, as just a career while everything's still going and moving, probably get into like growing or a dispensary type of job. You feel me? Yeah, that'd be bad, bro. You know, I tried doing that, but I always bounce around so many cities that I never got the chance to do it. But man, not only would it be something you enjoy, you know, being in that field, but also you get discounts, you get all the Mm -hmm. hookups, all that good stuff, bro, for real. It it does not sound like a bad gig. (laughs) <laughs> I'd feel like I'm in a candy shop with that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a family friend that called it the candy shop. Right, right. <laughs> I don't blame him. <laughs> Yo, that's tight though, man. Definitely do something with that. You know, who knows, man? Maybe later in life or maybe even sooner, you might have your own strain of bud, bro. Dude, I that's like a goal of mine. Like, that's on the bucket list for sure. Definitely want to tap into that. Man, a king spin buzz. <laughs> something like that, you know? Heavy indica. No doubt. Um, I mean, 
<laughs> what would what is your your favorite? Is it a hybrid, sativa, indica? It's hard because, like, at this point, I feel like I it, it can be hard to tell which is which sometimes when you smoke it because it's mostly the terps that are doing all the work. So, like, I mean, for me, I love indica because I feel like when something's called indica, it kind of makes my brain be like, all right, it's relaxed time. Mm -hmm. But, like, it, it kind of depends on the context, really. Like, if I was working, I'd probably prefer, like, a, a sativa type stream. So That's true. It's yeah. all about the mood, huh? Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that most folks will get to learn about you is not only are you a, a producer, but you're also a graphic designer, right? Right, right. Yeah, I do that a lot on my free time. That's also something I really enjoy. And can you go into the an extension on what that means? Um, so like, I mean, I mostly work on like album arts, like like all my album arts for the most part, except for like a select few are my own art that I made, um, like, just messing around with Photoshop or whatever it may be. And, like, believe it or not, like, uh, the Solitudism cover, that was actually made on my phone. Um, and yeah. so is the Synthetic Farm one. So, like, if you really, like, kind of have knowledge with something, like, you can do it wherever you are. And that's mm -hmm. why I really like digital design, because, like, with beats, I feel like I kind of got to be in my space with all my equipment and shit. But, like, with digital design, it's just something I can kind of do on the go. Um, mm -hmm. so it's just something that kind of eases my stress and like, just get my workflow, get creative with it. Um, and yeah. Yeah, man. Like one thing I admire about you, I mean, you're just a one-on-one -on -one type of artist, bro. I really, I think you're really dope and, um, the artwork really goes with the music like perfectly. Like it doesn't. Yeah, that's my goal really. Like, honestly. Right, that's beautiful, bro. Right now I'm looking at the synthetic farm artwork right now and, uh, Obviously, you, you told us a little bit of the story behind the EP, but can you give us a little bit more detail on, like, why you chose, like, the cows grazing? Yeah, I got you. So, like, that's – the whole idea with that is basically the whole farm idea. Um, so, so someone obviously, you know I, – I, I took a picture of someone snoring coat um, with a um, dollar bill or whatever it is and um, just edited that onto just this farmland with the cows and everything kind of mess with the coloring a little bit. Um, and that's mainly just as like a, a symbolism kind of how we're just on this like big farm, just getting fed these, these drugs and whatnot. So um, that's, that's kind of like the whole idea behind that. Mm, bro. I like that, bro. GG on everything. Bro. <laughs> you know, um, you, you, you kind of explain, you know, the three tracks, the EP it being exclusive to SoundCloud. I like that. Um, I'm a big fan of SoundCloud, but yeah, what are sure. what are your thoughts on SoundCloud? Um, so so far, like like I love SoundCloud, and they're they're making the right moves with like um the student like the um Next Pro like where you can distribute music and everything. Um, and I tried it, and I ran into a lot of problems with it um because it's still really young like being like it's kind of like a distro kid type thing where you can upload to spotify apple everything at once um and i have that and it's like cool and all but it's not working that great and like i feel like soundcloud's kind of on like a decline a little bit it's not as big as it was like you know it, but but you can still find like some really good shit on here and some really unique stuff so i mean i love soundcloud like, I'm never going to shit on it, but I will say I feel like the popularity and hype surrounding SoundCloud has kind of died a little bit, and it's mostly just for, like, leaks now. Mm, damn. I agree with you there, bro. Like, I love SoundCloud, but it's definitely in a weird space. Like, mm -hmm. it's stagnant, and I think, like, even their, their PR on Twitter is kind of weird, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. But um, right. going back to uh, Synthetic Farm, bro, I when I was listening it, uh, listening to it today, I kind of got a little bit of like a lo-fi vibe to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've been doing a lot of lo-fi stuff recently. Um, it, it's just a sound that I feel like is so unique. And I really want to like mess with it and kind of merge it to different types of music. Um, because like, no lie, like this newest album I've been working on, there is like a lot of like lo-fi type shit, but it's a very different sound too. And I feel like it's a more like um, distinguished sound opposed to like the, the regular lo-fi. 
mm-hmm. kind of like mixing it with like trap or like just dark shit or really like um flowy shit like like almost like if uh, like if outcast and like lo-fi had a baby that's kind of what i'm trying to go for yeah that's hard smooth drum patterns like the drums are real nice like really kind of jazzy almost but rap and just mixed with like lo-fi that's kind of what this newest one's been sounding like a little bit bro that is bad i'm looking forward to that because you know when i think when i think of king spin beats or or when i talk about you to other folks i i say he's like a like pandora's box you know, he has all these different sounds. Like, would you put yourself in a category of any type of genre? Or what do you, what's your opinion on that? That's hard. Because, like, my goal since I've been, like, since I started is just to, like, not necessarily master every sound, but, like, know how to do it. Know, like, the fundamentals and the basics of, like, all these different um, genres. And that's mainly in the, so, like, if I'm working with an artist, I want to be able to, just cook Mm. up for them no matter what kind of sound they're trying to go for you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. i feel like when you build up that resume kind of with different sounds and whatnot then um you can really do whatever that someone's trying to like commission you to do um it's kind of like an artist like just trying different art styles um and then they get commissioned for a piece that someone wants in like a van gogh type of style they know how to do that they're familiar so they can go forward with it you feel me Damn, that's a smart way of going about it, bro. Like, you know, I want to talk about all your projects and more. But before we do that, bro, let's take it back all the way. And when did this dream begin? Like, when did you decide to be a musician? Honestly, so so my mom gave me, like, her little iPod shuffle when I was a kid. Um, and that shit had, like, all the classics on it. Um, ranging from just the OGs of rap to like alternative rock, like just all the classics. Just so I already kind of like I just fell into music because I would literally just sit outside, um, and just shuffle that that iPod and just listen to whatever was there. And probably a lot of shit I shouldn't have listened to, <laughs> but like you know, it. I just enjoyed it so much. Like I just, it was like this love at first sight. Not to sound cliche, but like that's how it felt. And um. Basically, like, when I was around, like, 12, um, my pop-up had this, like, you know, compared to today's standards, it's a little shitty laptop. But um, I basically hopped on that and was using, like, these different um, studio websites um, and, and GarageBand on my phone. And, like, w- what actually first inspired me was Skrillex. Like, that was the main Skrillex and like Eminem and Mm. it's kind of random, but those were like who I really liked when I was little. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, I basically just started messing around with sounds on there. And like, I made my first beat when I was 12 and it was mostly just like a bunch of loops together. Mm. Sounds kind of like when you listen to it, it sounds kind of stupid, kind of crazy, but like, but like I had an idea of like what a song's supposed to be structured like. And ever since then, like, I've just been in love completely with music. And now, like, when I got FL Studio, um, probably, like, four years back, I'd say, that's when it, like, really started to take off. And, like, I I just felt deep into production. Damn, bro. That's dope. You know, nice name drops, bro. You know, Skrillex and Eminem. And matter of fact, you're the first one in uh, – in- up here radio podcast history to bring up Skrillex, bro. So that's tight right there. Yeah. <laughs> They're dope, yeah. bro. That's their legends. Yeah, no doubt. Like, even today, like, that dude changed exactly, like, everything. He, he changed everything with these with these sounds. And, like, um, I don't know. Like, there's there's so many people I could, I could name drop that, like, I listened to when I was little and I still listen to today. Like, I don't listen to Eminem as much because his newer stuff hasn't really hit with me. Mm-hmm. But, um, like, I mean, like, Skrill, M, and, like, Dr. Dre, like, mm. Outkast, just all the all them OG people that just really engineered this shit and brought it to, like, a whole new level. Like, that's really my, my biggest influences, I guess. Man, I like that. You know, for a minute, I was kind of worried about these new artists, like, not really caring about the history of 
you know, mm-hmm. music really. Um, yeah. So to hear you bring up these OGs like that, man, that's mad, dope, dude. Bro, I'd be listening to Beethoven. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I'd be on the historical shit, trust me. I, I love it. Yo. I love this shit every day. Bro, Beethoven, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Damn, bro, that's tight. Um, you mentioned earlier how you you want to be able to have the capabilities to cook up a track for any type of artist. Right. Um, but talk about your main goals and what you're trying to achieve with this music thing. So there's there's a lot of a lot of goals. Um and it's mostly just to try to impact as many people as possible in a positive kind of way. Um I just like if I can make success out of this, I just wanna, you know, help help the world in a way. I don't know, like as much as I can. If I have a bigger reach that means I can kind of do more. Um, so, so yeah, my main goal is to just have people like have good sounds for people to enjoy, but on the side, like also, you know, talk to these artists and, and kind of help them through their journey. Like, like if I really got to like that, that level of production where it's like, just the top of the top, like I would really want to help artists, like stay away from all these suits, like trying to take money from them and make them go broke just cause mm-hmm. they got talent. Like start my own label, like do that kind of shit, you know. Just give give artists more of a platform um, to do their thing without it being like so. I don't I don't know what the word would be, but like suffocating, I guess. Because mm. um, I feel like it's really hard for artists to get a start, and um, I don't know. There's there's so many talented people out there who haven't been like heard by the world. So, I know yeah. that's a disappointing thing, but. I do feel like the independent artist's voice is getting louder and louder. Mm-hmm. It most definitely is. I mean, there's like a whole revolution going on right now, I feel like. Oh, yeah. Because um, independent artists are starting to find more and more success by people like us who who like take the time to actually listen to them. We're not just listening to whatever is just thrown on the radio or, or suggested. Like You actually kind of dig into the shit you're trying to find. Mm-hmm. Especially like Spotify does a good job at that and giving you artists that like, like say like two thousand monthly listeners and you listen to their shit and you're like, damn, like this really needs to be heard. Um, so like props to Spotify for that first off because they really know like how to put people out there based on sounds. But um, yeah, like independency is getting big. I think record labels are probably shitting themselves right now, <laughs> bro. Like. It's true. These these music labels got to re-strategize and come up with a different approach. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm an Apple user, so I have, like, the Apple Music. I don't know much about Spotify, but I I do know what you're saying. Um, it helps the artists a lot, but I don't really know really? anything. So if you can't, can you go in detail on what Spotify exactly does? Yeah, I got you. So basically, like... Um... Spotify, they they make weekly playlists for you. And, like, they're really catered to the user. So, like, they'll make a playlist for me. And it's, like, based off shit you listened to last week, this is what you should listen to now. And sometimes they'll give me, like, these really discreet artists that are just making, like, really good shit. Or, like, you look up a kind of discreet song that you heard from somebody and, like, they'll just shuffle, like, artists very similar to that. Um, and, and like layered into the underground and shit. So like, so I feel like like because I've used Apple. Like I've been I was on Apple for years and years. I switched to Spotify, um, like this last summer. So not even that long ago, and like it really opens your eyes to like this whole whole new world of music and shit. And it's been really inspiring, honestly. Okay, okay. So like, Spotify must have like one of the dopest algorithms out right now really i yeah i think so like as a musician like from what i can tell compared to when i had apple music like i'm just finding so much new shit that i love and like my playlists just keep growing and growing like like you add a song to your playlist on there i don't know if apple has this yet but like you add a song and it'll just give you lists on lists of like shit related to that like shit very similar to that and you can just add it or preview it listen to it see if you like it um, and it's just really convenient overall to like find new shit. Wow, that's mad dope, bro. I think um, we should end up like later in life having a podcast just discussing Spotify's algorithm, bro. That's a trip because 
that kind of has similarities to what TikTok is now doing with their algorithm compared to like YouTube shorts or like Instagram reels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mm-hmm. TikTok is so like that AI algorithm, whatever they're using is like so smart. It's insane. It is crazy. Like, yeah. No, it, um, it just, it blows my mind. I don't know. Um, my next question, bro, is King Spin Beats. What, what is the origin story behind that? <laughs> it's, so I was sitting on a boat <laughs> with my family one day. And so I, I was previously, so I went from Wami to Unlucky to King Spin. And um, I was sitting on the boat and shit with my fam. <laughs> And I was just thinking, like, yo, I don't really like Unlucky anymore. Like, I want to change it to – because I feel like there's probably a lot of Unlucky beats out there. Like, when you search Kingspin, um, either it'll try to autocorrect it to Kingpin for you, or you could, like, just type in, like, beats after it and, like, all pop up. So, like, that was one of the influences was having something more unique. But also, like, I was just thinking, like, like, just for hours on that boat, like, what the fuck should my name be? And, like, I was, like, I want something, like, Kingpin. Like, like I, I wanted to relate it to that. Like, some Marvel-type shit. Mm. And then um, I, I thought, like, what you do with a record? You spin that shit? All right. So, the original logo had, like, the K and the S with a crown. And then it had this, like, uh, record overlay on it to make it look like the letters were... um like a record and shit so um yeah that's the whole thing like spinning a record and then king with the crown like that that was kind of the whole idea behind it bro i like that story dog you was in the water bro <laughs> the water, right the, the boat was flowing in the water mm-hmm. you know and we were just out there hot ass day and i was just sitting back thinking about that shit <laughs> <laughs> that's so true though like to have like a name that when you when you YouTube it or Google it, it'll go to just you and nothing else. Like that's smart mm-hmm. right there, bro. Yeah, it's kind of necessary now, um, in my opinion, because like if you don't have a unique name, like so much other shit can pop up and you just get buried. So I feel like it's it's just something very important to have now in terms of like it, not only do I love it creatively as a name, but like also it it kind of fit that like marketing standpoint. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, it, it overall just seemed like the best like name for me. Damn, so, bro. Yeah. I like that, dude. I like that. Kingspin Beats. Um, so I want to go over kind of how I discovered you and um, let the viewers know. Uh, but by the way, bro, Matt Snake said hi. Oh, shit. What's up, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said... Is he like in a chat or like where, no, where I, is he texting from? I had a, a phone call with him before the podcast. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, That's yeah. Um, man, he has nothing but great things to say about you, bro. Um, but let me go ahead and say the little story. So it was through Mad Snake in his in his collective, where mm-hmm. you know I, I he showed me all these artists, all these sick artists too, dude. Like so right. many dope. HR, you got Amen, Dead Internally, and Kingspin, and m- many more, bro. Many more. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. talk about like the origins of that and how you met Mad Snake and whatnot. Okay. So, um, yeah, basically I actually met Mike at a football game. So like we were, we live close, like he's, he's in my area. So like, that's where I met him and we were just kind of talking about music and shit. And, um, it kind of just like snowballed. Like, uh, he, he started his like whole collective thing. Cause he was already doing like podcast interviews, whatnot. Um, and it kind of just snowballed in this big thing where we just started, like, adding new people we find and everything to the point where, like, you know, they were flying out to see each other and shit, like, hmm. um, which is dope. Like, yeah. it, we, um, like, the, the group chat has been, like, kind of slow lately. Um, I feel like, like, compared to, like, when it first started, but, but we definitely have some talent in there. And, um, yeah, like, Mike's very good with, um networking and like like just finding people and shit like i don't know how he does it but he's very good with communicating with people and like Mm -hmm. being heard i feel like um and i really fuck with that about him so like you know 
we like we even went to see um Voji and shit. Like we drove to see Voji and that was that was cool. Like <laughs> like overall, I mean the the surfing is just like that OG shit. Like I could I could never leave that. Can never like that's just all the boys. It's the homies and I love working with them or talking to them. So yeah, like it it's been a long ride like compared to when it started, but it's definitely moving in the right direction, I feel like. Yo, the idea of you and Mike going to go see Voji is insane, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was wild, bro. It was it was a crazy trip. No lie. Bruh, that it kind of it reminds me of that serpentine tape, bro. That serpentine tape was amazing, dog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I like all the projects and shit. Um I love them, you know, it's everyone just doing their thing. Like it's it's great. Like that's that's the whole point of what we're trying to do. It's just, you know, let people speak their mind, be creative and shit. Um, it's it's sick. It's awesome work. Like that's my favorite part, is just working with other people and shit. Damn, that's tight though. So shout out Matt's name, bro, for real. Shout out the whole team. For real. Mm-hmm. Um oh, yeah. so next on the list, bro, Infinity Ultra. My goodness, bro. <laughs> like, man, I'm going to keep saying it, dude. Like, you just know how to make heat, bro. And it <laughs> not only do you know how to make it, heat, man. it just, it, you don't, um, what's the word? You don't rinse and repeat, you know? Right, right. I feel you. That's that's what I try to avoid, like, as best as I can. Because it can be hard. Like, it can be hard to not rinse and repeat. Like, literally, like, especially with production. It's so easy to just do the same shit you're doing. For real, bro. It's like, it's one thing after another. Oh, hold on. I got, I got a special guest at my door. Oh, Kingspin. Yeah, no worries, bro. Yeah, so welcome to Uphill Radio. Thank you. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Uphill Radio. Yeah, yo, I'm back. I got... My, oh, I got some snacks, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Don't worry, that's what's up. There you go. But um, Infinity Ultra, bro. Okay, so let me tell the viewers my thoughts on this. When I heard this tape, I I automatically just thought like hip hop. Like he was he was showing some love for the hip hop scene compared to his other tapes that we'll go over that are a little mm-hmm. bit more experimental. Um, different have a different environment. It actually creates its own environment, really. But with Infinity Ultra, it just you brought like the roots of hip hop, and the, of course, every instrument that you have recorded on these on the, on the songs, bro, are so crisp, bro. Like it's so professional. Like any kind of mainstream artist can jump on it. But go ahead and talk to us about your process and the artwork, bro, and the reason why it's called Infinity Ultra. I got you. Okay, so. So Infinity Ultra, um, it's the whole concept behind the project originally, like, it, it definitely panned out different. But, like, so I was in this creative rut for, like, a minute after um, after Life 2. So, like, I was just really struggling to make shit for, like, a while. <clears throat> I would, like, sit down, start making beats, and just could not fucking, like, complete a beat for the life of me, just on beat block. Mm. Um and then I found, like, this new kind of way that I can make them. And, like, it would be kind of hard for me to explain because um, it's just a lot of producer words and bullshit. <laughs> um, but, like, to put it simply, like, I found a new way to, like, just lay out and, like, plan my shit and, like, work with it. Um, got some new plugins, just, like, in little investments here and there, new drums and shit. Um, and the whole idea behind the project is that, the the present being the only thing that has no end it's it's just infinity you feel me like the present just goes on forever and that's why like the cover art it's got like that infinity sign with the eye it's it's kind of like tapping into just like some of my philosophical thoughts i feel like and like a lot of the names too tend tend to do that too for my beats it's just like shit on my mind um so, like, yeah, I was definitely trying to tap into just, like, a new way of mi- mixing, mastering, um, drums, like, just a whole new way to do everything for myself. And I feel like it's really ki- kind of, like, honed in my skills. It was it was definitely, like, a big building block when I made this. Bro, 
you said it perfect. You said the present is forever. That's a trip, bro. <laughs> yeah. If you look in the description of the project, I actually have the, the quote there. Um, the present think, is the only was... thing that has no end. Yeah, I think it was Schrodinger who said that. Um, I could be wrong. But, yeah, that's basically, like, like as it says, too, like, my goal is to make the instrumental speak in a uh-huh. way. Like, like I want these beats to have words without having words. That's kind of, like, another big goal of mine. So, yeah. Bro, that goal is already happening, dude. Like, you're the type of, you know, because I, I know a lot of music producers due to Up Her Radio, you know, and... But a handful of them are just so crafty in what they do. And But with you, bro, your music, you can literally put on a pair of headphones, lay down or sit on the sofa or take a drive and just let the music take you on a trip, bro. You don't even right, gotta right. do drugs. You don't got to drink. You don't got to <laughs> do none of that. That's the goal. And another thing with that is like psychedelics too. Like I want motherfuckers to just trip and listen to my shit and be like, god damn like mm. i don't know that's like a, i don't know i i could talk about that too but like that's definitely another goal is like kind of just elevate people's moods and just let it ride out like something to drive to study to chill to like whatever you're trying to do you can even like fuck to it if you want i don't care <laughs> but, but like yeah, yeah i just want them to kind of be songs without really being songs like having someone singing on it and everything um so yeah. yeah for real you know speaking on trips bro like let's go ahead and talk about the trip volume two heart of fire bro oh shit bad, bad, bad. yeah let's talk about that okay with this yeah. one yeah dude with this one i would say this one part to me because i think we'll get into afterlife after this but afterlife it was more um it had a, a outer space atmosphere yeah Mm-hmm. But with trip, you also get that, but it, you 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 get the good and the bad. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I feel you for sure. Go ahead and That's... talk about the story behind that one. So, so the trip volume two. So I I made the original trip a while ago when I was unlucky, um, and the trip was kind of supposed to be like like a statement um, on just like progression in a way because i mean it has 36 tracks so like that's that's a lot for a tape i feel like considering how much time it usually takes me because like i there's times where i can make beats in like an hour and it sounds like i worked hella hours on it and there's times where i can make take hours to make beats and like you know it's just a whole nother process so like um the trip volume two it's almost just like a showcase. I just kind of wanted to show my flexibility while also kind of taking you on a journey and shit. Um, because it's it's really hard to like make shit kind of structural with the 36 tracks. But I tried my best to do that and kind of make the sounds kind of blend into each other like a transition. Um, so yeah, like that, that one was heavy, like just um, a showcase, I feel like, like a compilation. Um, rather than like just after like two, where it's like this full body, like kind of journey project um, type deal. And another thing I wanted to touch on that real quick is the person who made the cover art for that. Um, I was actually, I went to school with her. She's working on the one for the next project right now. So um, hey. just a little cool lore type thing. So yeah. Bruh, shout out her, bro. That's some good artwork, dude. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she killed that shit. She made that shit in like an hour. I feel Whoa. like shit is incredible. And that's yeah. actually me. That's that's a drawing of me. So Man, yeah. you have a good taste too, bro, to have certain folks around you to work with. Yeah, no, it was awesome. Like I met her in a digital design class and like she's um she's really she's really fucking talented. Like just another example is just artists who are who are just talented as shit are just really anywhere you can you can find them like very yeah. creative minds um so shout out to her yeah for, for sure. real it's it's really it's too bad how much how many of you are out here that are underrated you know yeah i mean i i just i take it as a humbling thing like i'm never upset about um listens whatever like i just as long as like people like i, I don't care if my shit gets ear listens because at the end of the day like i put the headphones on and 
it's it's like a joke. Like I just kind of lose myself. I I don't feel shit. Like I'm not nervous about anything. Yeah. It's, it's such a when 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 you find something like that, like a passion like that, it, it's kind of hard to like just um to be upset about shit like streams and whatnot because the people who really care about that usually it's not their full passion. Like they just want the money. They just want the clout. Um. So yeah. That's a good answer, bro. I like that energy. It's true, dude. You know, if you have a good approach in life, like beautiful things happen at the most trippiest times, you know, compared to if you have creed in the back of your mind or you just have the wrong approach. So good things are going to come your way with that kind of attitude, bro, for sure. Yeah, no, I hope so, because I feel like that's the that's a good way to look at it if it's truly your passion and you're in love with it. Mm, 100, bro. Now. Uh, with, with the trip volume two, bro, like you said, it is 36 tracks, which is very ballsy of you to do, especially in hip hop. You know, mm -hmm. uh, th a lot of times the mainstream fan base, they're, they don't like long lengths of tapes, long lengths of music or even anything, really. For sure. Yeah. I don't even really like like it depends. It really depends. But it's, usually I don't want to dive into like projects that big sometimes. Yeah, it could it could sometimes yeah it could sometimes feel like a bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Um, but before I ask you the question on the thirty six tracks, like when I was listening to this tape, bro, it didn't feel like thirty six tracks. Like it just felt like a, it just like a movie, like a good movie, just to be relaxed into in in a sense. Right. Does that make sense? No, I feel you. That's definitely like kind of what I wanted. Like I just wanted. It, because, like, sometimes 36 tracks from an artist can be, like, excruciating. Like, <laughs> let's say, like, Young Boy dropping, like, three albums like, <laughs> a fucking week. Like, yeah. that's a little much because you know that not all of them are going to, like, really, really hit like that compared to others. Because yeah. they're just so – it's it's that quantity over quality. But what I wanted was to have, like, quantity and quality. Like, obviously, some beats stand out here more than others. But, like, I feel like – I wanted it to still be consistent in a sense. You For know? real. But like, what was your reason behind this tape having 36 tracks? Kind of, kind of resume purposes, honestly, just like, I really wanted it to be a resume, like of just all the different shit I can do, you know, like there's even like, there's like a funk section in there. There's like hyper pop. There's like just a whole slew of different genres and shit like psychedelic rap, trip-hop, um, R&B, like, just a bunch of different shit, I feel like. Even Yo, some I, drill shit. I like how you brought up R&B, bro. Oh, yeah, I've been working on a lot of R&B beats recently, low-key. You know, speaking on this subject for a little bit, what are your thoughts on R&B? Because R&B hit different back in the early 2000s and in the 90s. I, I think it's making, like, the biggest comeback it's had yet, I feel like. Um, with artists like Daniel Caesar, Brent Fez, um, SZA, like, a lot of female artists especially, um, they've been they've been really, um, en like, engineering that shit to this new kind of wave, um, which is what I've been trying to make lately is, like, their type of shit, where it's just kind of like, I feel like r and is getting a lot more spacey. Like, back then you used to have, like, a lot of pianos and rim shots and shit, but like, mm. like now nowadays, like it's kind of taking a more ambient approach, and like I'm really fucking with that sound. So like you, on the on the upcoming projects, and even like if you go on my Beat Stars profile too, there's some unreleased stuff, um, that's R and B. So like, yeah, I've been working to try to like tap into that sound too. I feel like, bro, did you? like learn those strategies of like having exclusive records on these different platforms? Um, it's, I don't really know. Like it's, it's kind of, I just, I see like, I, I've seen other people do it and I feel like it's kind of cool to just have like something <laughs> exclusive to different things. Like my beat stars beats, like those are mostly commercial vibes. Like, opposed to my projects like i make those more personal to me but like in terms right. of these stars like you kind of want to cater more to the artists in terms of your mixing and what it sounds like 
So like, on my beat stars, it's mostly beats where like people can truly like kind of dive into them as an artist, as opposed to me just trying to like express myself on my own projects. You feel me? Yeah. I want to talk more about beat stars, but before I go there, um, I want to say one final thing on the, the trip. No, I want to say two more things on the volume trip too okay. is uh what was the reason behind uh adding kodak black to the to the <laughs> the um PLTT <laughs> remix um yeah that that was just me messing with house because i really wanted to start working on house stuff and i i do have an unreleased like remix album that i don't know if i'm gonna drop that or not but um that was just really me like trying to mess with remixing and, and be like I, yo i could do this too you feel me like I, it, I mean it's a vibe to me so like <laughs> i don't know for real bro you definitely can bro i'm telling you right now you can do anything bro thank you yeah no nah, i want to do anything bro that's that's definitely the goal like i'm trying to be like a, a octopus producer just fucking just making a I bunch like of genres that. at once like i don't know damn bro put that on a t-shirt <laughs> octopus producer bro that's hard bro. it's a little corny but it would it would go hard maybe i should sell some octopus producer fucking merch <laughs> bro i think that's i think that's hard but uh you know the the final thing i want to say on the the trip volume two is uh i went on your i'm on your soundcloud and i'm on your albums and two years ago it says here you dropped the original the trip yep um, I haven't heard it not one track. I got I do got to make time for it because I I I mean it's obvious that you have a trip one because the volume two. Right. But what was the thoughts on the original trip? Where were you at in life, and why did you decide to make a second volume? And like a lot, honestly, a lot has changed since um the original trip. Like in terms of my personal life, but the trip was where like. I kind of felt like I started finding myself more as an artist. Um, and, like, in my personal opinion, like, I listen to the trip now, and I'm like, you know, like, there's so much things that could be improved. There's so much shit. Like, that's why on the trip volume two, like, I, I added some remasters to some of the tracks where I kind of tweaked the mixing a little bit. But, like, I found the trip to be, like, the, the um, start of, like, the projects I've been making. It's, it's like a landmark for me that's hard dog it's Damn. it's actually the the whole point of the project is the development throughout a trip so like you start out you drop that shit you're like where am i you find yourself and then you fall into like this this dark place ego death and then the sense of realization i'm not real and then the end of the trip it's it's all like it, it's supposed to be a journey throughout like taking a like something like DMT or like um, even LSD mushrooms type vibe. Whoa, bro! It's like uh, it's like your catalog is the Kingspin universe, bro. All these different timelines. There, yeah, there's a lot. Like, I just want everything to be like. It, I don't really drop shit without it kind of defining something. I feel like like I want I want it to mm. speak. I want all of them to speak. You feel me? That's hard, dog. Um, let's jump into uh, Beat Stars, bro. Now, my thing with Beat Stars is I think it's a great uh, social media for just business to, you know, mm-hmm. no no mucking around. This is what I'm providing and this is the price. And I know a few producers that use it, but I only know a handful that are successful at it. Can you talk about um, how you use it and how it's benefited you? So I actually just started using it again for the first time in like a while. Um, I used to use it when I was on Unlucky and the Kingsman one just got started. Like, let's see, uh, trying to look at the first drop real quick. Um, Like literally in January. So like this month actually. So I've been working on kind of like just figuring it out, figuring out the layout, how to promote on it. Um, and like, they have this really useful studio section that I've been tapping into. So like, I still have honestly, personally, like a lot to learn about it, but I'm starting to find ways where you can kind of get like more on the map with it throughout like its layout and everything. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, 
still learning because I know nothing about Beat Stars, bro. I've only seen like, um, have you heard of Kyle Beats on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, of course. He's cool. Yeah, that dude is tight. That's how I learn about Beat Stars, and I like what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he definitely he, he's he's a dope guy. I actually watched him like a lot um, when I first started because he kind of just gives you like the basics and shit. Like sh- he he's actually very helpful to a lot of like producers starting out with like um, SL Studio or whatever um, interface someone might use. Yeah, dude, that's true. Like, I feel like um, you're like miles and miles and miles ahead in, in league as compared to him because he, he does like a basic kind of sound yeah it's like type beats yeah type beats yeah but i like his drive and i like what he's mm-hmm. doing um, he's an entrepreneur at heart honestly for, yeah 100 bro he's gonna go places dude for sure mm-hmm. um who knows man maybe you could end up doing something like that because you got what it takes bro you you're good at everything bro yeah i mean i i like I, that's just really the goal is to like just to be resourceful um to just mm-hmm. you know like be flexible um because there's i mean i still listen to my beats and i think of a thousands of ways like i could improve them i never really that's one thing i struggle with is like i never listen to my beats like if i was just another person like i i'm mm-hmm. very i i am a big critic on myself like heavy um like, you know, you, you are kind of your own worst critic. Like, I'll listen to something, I'll find an imperfection, I'll be like, shit, like, I got to work on this next time. But it's also a good thing, because then you kind of just make building blocks for yourself to, to add on. I like that, bro. That's a good answer. Um, You know, I'm looking here at your, at your catalog, bro, and um, I didn't get to listen to Static 001. You have it under dance and EDM. Mm-hmm. The artwork goes with it, goes with the what you put as the hashtag. Talk about that. So static, honestly, was like a very so so the the beats where you find like or like the projects where you find very like sporadic kind of like chaotic flashy sounds is is mostly beats where I'm just. Like, I really need to vent. Something's going on. And I'm just, like, getting, just putting my brain onto this shit. Mm. Like, I'm literally, like, I got my paintbrush. This is my fucking studio set up. And then I'm just dipping it into my head and just, like, splattering shit out. Um, And in, in the description, like, I think it says something, like, it's just that the project's just kind of supposed to be my, my mind, kind of, just my mm. brain, mm. like, a lot of a lot of this shit is self expression. Like like you can tell by tones like throughout it how I'm feeling in in like certain points of my life. And like static was let me see when that was released. Hold on. Yeah, so like it says July thirtieth of twenty twenty two. So I was going through like a really rough patch at that time. So like you'll find kinda like chaotic shit, I feel like. But it's it's not bad though. It's not bad. Like, I, I still fuck with that project. Man, you, you know, you, you you said it just now, and I'm going to repeat it. You, like, when you make a beat, when you're working on music, bro, you, you literally, like, record your essence, like, your energy on the record. You know? It's alive. The record is alive. Right, yeah. That's, yeah, that's definitely one of the biggest things to me is, like, just kind of telling people and getting getting – what I'm trying to say out in a way because I, I can't really sing. I, I, I've mm-hmm. never really tapped into that. I don't, I, I don't know how much I want to get into that at, at all, but like, I know I know how to produce. So like, it's, it's a way for me to kind of get it out without having to sing rap, whatever. And, um, it's dope. For real. It's like therapy. Bro, for real. Dog. And you've given us, ways to have their uh use that as therapy too bro like for real um you know i'm going through your catalog bro and it, it says here like i'm gonna be honest with you bro it says here that i liked and reposted purple throne and uh memphis nights but i don't really remember those tapes bro mm-hmm. but but um the one that kicked it off for me 
uh, to like becoming a big fan of yours, bro, was of course the Serpentine tape and this Afterlife tape, bro. The Afterlife is the one that really did it for me. Right. Um, talk about the process and on uh, making the project and where you were in life when you were making Afterlife. So, um, yeah, Afterlife was actually like, honestly, like peak ass in my life like shit like i was going through heartbreak grief death like like a lot of shit um like my fucking my car i I bought this car that shit was all fucked up um like a lot of shit was going on i was being very challenged by life and it's it's a point in time that i'm very thankful for like today but at the time like it was it was very very difficult so like afterlife was kind of my like I consider it like a rebirth um, for myself mm. because of how much the pain from that made me grow. You feel me? Almost that, bro. It's, I read this thing today that said, um, damn it, where did I read it at? Dang it. I don't remember where I got it from, but it says that, you know, these, these trials that we go through, you know, these, these difficult times is what builds us, mm-hmm. you know, it builds, it builds character and it, it, it lets us survive longer in life. Oh no, no. I mean, it's it's all yin and yang, bro. Like you, you can't have you cannot have a good day without a bad day. It just it doesn't work like that. You can't have life without death. It's it's black and white. It's it's really you, you cannot grow without that pain and without those good times. Like it's all it's all very necessary for each other. You know. Damn, that's true, bro. Yin and yang. I like that. You know, you going through such a hard time during this, uh, like you said, uh, during or before, during or before Afterlife? Um, it was kind of like from the span of like, uh, let's see, I'm just going to take a look. So Purple Throne to Afterlife was like kind of where it like was really a, a really hard time for me. So my question is with um you going through those trials bro like i like how you said life was challenging you you know you going through those challenges and you know to make it over the hill where you're at right now bro do you are you able to listen back to these records and you know be okay with the memories that came with it or is it too too much to bear where you don't really feel comfortable listening to those songs honestly it's like it's one of my favorite parts is like being able to reflect on kind of like how far I've came from it. Because when I listen to the sounds, I can kind of identify how I was feeling at the time. And like, I'm thankful that like I made it past that and I grew myself and, and kind of found myself more like um, Purple Throne was actually like a project dedicated to my grandmother. Um, and like, there's a lot of shit on there that's very heavy to me because um, she was a very big part of my life, but like that, that whole project was actually dedicated to her. And like, um, I look back on it and I just like, it just kind of makes me cherish it more. Like, you know, sh- shit's going to get better. Um, and, and shit yeah. can turn around. Like my life really did a 360, like past after life, like a, a lot changed. And you can even tell by like after life too, how different it is. And like, eye-opening i guess like just the the progression and shit that's a good way to yeah that's true that's trippy yeah it's like it's like your track listings you know heaven and you know stuff like that and you know by the way bro like rest in peace to your grandmother dude yeah thank you man and uh you got it i'm happy that um you know you're in a much better place bro for Mm -hmm. real like there's i mean obviously like life is hard like it just is it's just like it fucking throws shit at you all the time but but i will say that like i i made the best out of the, the cards that were given to me at that point in time and music helped me like dramatically throughout that bro that's a beautiful mindset dog i like that um here on your soundcloud i mean you did mention how you have like SoundCloud exclusives and then you have BeatStar exclusives, but here it says a total on, on SoundCloud, it says a total of 371 tracks, mm-hmm. bro. It's crazy because on my screen it says 630. <laughs> oh, 630. <laughs> Man, dog. 
<laughs> you know, from there, I have so many questions off that alone. Um, what's what's it look like in your vault, bro? Um, well, wait, what do you mean by that? Like the music that's unreleased. Oh, shit. Um, oh, the vault. Okay. Um, shit. So, honestly, like a lot of shit that's unreleased is typically um, just stuff I didn't feel like was was good enough. Like, like some people could listen to it and probably really like it and they'll be like, I don't see an issue with this. But like I said, you know, like it, being my own critic and whatnot, like there are, there's even like projects that will probably never be heard throughout here. Um, just beats, you know, like just a lot of stuff um, throughout here that either won't be heard, will be heard, will be retouched. But like, yeah, like I, it, it literally like crashes my PC when I try to scroll through them sometimes. <laughs> um, Yo, <yeah. laughs> go, bro! You're a go, dude. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen total projects on SoundCloud. Um. If you can, bro, mm -hmm. which one is your favorite? That's a good question. Hmm. Honestly, and this is like, it's kind of random, but I feel like this project was very important to me. Um, and it's kind of like a tie between them. Like, obviously, like, in terms of, like, quality, my most recent are my favorite because the mixes and everything have been better and the sound and everything. And I have more flexibility with them. But like in terms of like heartfelt like shit I really care about, it's hard to pick. Black Sheep is definitely like it, that was a very like crazy moment. Um, and I don't know if you've listened to that one, but it's it's very philosophical. But like as of right now, probably Afterlife Two as like an all around project is probably my favorite. Yo, okay, so right here, I have not heard Black Sheep yet, but I'm going to repost it here and make time for that. I'm I'm really, I'm really interested now, that being your favorite one. i um, going to check that one out. Uh, but now, dude, this is going to narrow it down even more, which is going to be difficult because you have so many records. What are your top three favorite songs that you have out today? <sighs> Song shit. Um, probably... My favorite one that like I made is probably um Dark Maroon Marching Band. I just mm -hmm. that's that's one of my I had the most fun with that one. And uh I, I was just like going crazy when I was making it. Like I was getting really hyped. Um I'm trying to just think of ones that I really come back to. Like um Purple Th Purple Throne might actually be like my second favorite. Uh, the inch, like the intro to Purple Throne, um, that's like self-titled. And then DMT three 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 on Black Sheep is my third. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna make time to listen to these. That's that's mad. Though. Why is it? Is it because just the vibe that you 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 carried on it, or was it what you were going through and be able to to release it into the record? Sometimes, like when when you make a beat. It's like sometimes when you make one, some just feel so special to you in a sense. Like there, there's a lot of like heavy shit in some of them where like even the day I made it was very like challenging. So mm -hmm. like, you know, when when you really make something and you're like, damn, like I fucking like I love this. That's when it really just stays with you. Because like there's there's a lot that I'll like forget about sometimes. But like. The ones that are the most memorable probably are the ones I just listed for me personally. I like that, bro. Definitely going to make time for that. Um, now, bro, you said that you do have a project in the works. Mm -hmm. um, what's the release date? What is the process behind that? So I'm aiming to release it probably around like the 24th of next month. Uh, I'm trying to actually like drop a pro like projects heavy this year, um, just to expand my catalog and like 
um, pick apart which ones I want to put on uh, beat stars and whatnot. Um, so like, I'm thinking pro- more than likely February 24th um, for this next one. It's called uh, Purificata. And um, Purificata. right now, like we got the, the cover art coming up and I have about 12 tracks on it already. And I just started working on it. I think like last week, like after I dropped Solitudism. So like, it's coming along. Mm-hmm. I was going to drop one called Soul Tone. Um, and that might still be like a mini release for SoundCloud. But um, Purificata is going to be like the the next big one on all platforms and everything. Purificata. I think you'll like that one. This one's going to have like a lot of like droney, like lo-fi sounds. Like it's different. Oh, It even has some drum and uh... bass on it. So. And I actually released that Yo. single today, which is a drum and bass track. Is that Scatterbrain? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, it's actually Splatterbrain. I actually took it from Scatterbrain because there's this one song by um, who is it? Hold on, I think it's Jeff Beck. Yeah, Jeff Beck. Go to guitars. Um, he has this track called Scatterbrain, which is just like eight minutes or so of him just going fucking crazy on his guitar, and um. Hmm. I, I kind of derived it from that. So, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, I went and I searched for it on uh, on Apple and I couldn't find it. Really? I, I, yeah. I saw it on Apple. Um, I can't listen to stuff on Apple since I don't have the subscription, but I did see it on there. And it, it dropped on Spotify today, I think. Um, so, I don't know. That's weird. It, 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 Let me you see. may have typed in Scatterbrain, though. How do you spell it? Uh, so just like splatter and then brain, okay. brain connected to it. So like splatter brain. All right, let me looky here. It has like a, a face with its like brain exposed on the cover. No, I'm not seeing it. Is it maybe you said you saw it for sure though, right? Yeah, if you add mm-hmm. Kingspin to the end of it, it might pop up. Yeah, no, it has two T's, right? Splatter, brain. Uh, yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. What happened? Uh, oh, shit. Oh, I see what happened. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I may have um, typoed the title. It is actually called oh. Splatter Brain. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you just got to uh, fix it? Um, I actually, oh, there it is. I found it. I don't know if I can fix it, but that's funny as shit. That's it, I was actually wrong. <laughs> the the title on SoundCloud <laughs> is Splatterbrain, but I guess on streaming services it's Scatterbrain. Oh, fuck it. I mean, two titles. Oh, weird. That's I guess that's cool. Hey, <laughs> you're the first one to do it, bro. <laughs> I even did that <laughs> for the visualizer today. I rendered the whole video for it, and it said Scatterbrain after I did it, and I was like, shit, I gotta change that. <laughs> oh, man, my brain is everywhere. God damn. No, that's tight though. You're making history. <laughs> yeah, we're changing it up a little bit. A little Easter. I like that. Shit, all right. Yeah, a little Easter. You got everybody got to tune into this podcast now to find out. Nah, for real. It's a deep cut. Um, for real, bro. <laughs> but uh, Kingspan, tell is there a a fun fact that you want to put out there that the folks don't know? Fun fact. Oh, man. You know, like, in school when they give you, like, the, the brain shit, like, like tell a fun fact about yourself, like a icebreaker? <laughs> I could never yeah. think of one. Um, <laughs> I mean, uh, the, the biggest thing I would want to, like, say about myself is, like, um, I hope that people take the time to listen. Oh. To the shit I'm making mm. and just like kind of think about it because on the surface it could look like something to you but to me like this shit is very um mu- music is my love that's my fun fact it is it is my life it's a it's a real driving purpose behind like me just carrying out and getting out of bed I feel like um it's just very important to me say so, that's good dog. that's that's a good fact look Say what? I, I, it's just like a soulmate. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, I do, bro. Like, 
there's some like nothing can replace music mm-hmm. you know it's 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 incredible that we have it it's such it's such a trip it, if you really just think about it i think about it all the time man it's crazy that we just <laughs> listen to these people rhyming and, and making instrumentals and shit and just like enjoy it so much i i think it's a beautiful thing because you really can't find that many people out there that'll say i like no music i knew one person in my life like that and they were by far like the weirdest person ever so like if someone tells you they don't like music, red flag. Like just yeah. don't talk to them. They're gonna be insufferable. <laughs> Yo, that kind of goes hand in hand with folks who don't like animals. Yeah, like I, it's it's just like I get it if you got like a condition, you don't fuck with music, whatever. Like that's perfectly fine. But like if you just if you're that is just being that person that like. It just says like nah, like any music is is horrible. It's like nah, like you like bro, calm down. Like, like they literally like we used to have these discussion boards. Like like I'm not in high school anymore, but we used to have these discussion boards, and and they're like they were literally like yo, write a fun fact about yourself. And this dude's fun fact, and, and it's kind of funny that it actually ended up being like this since we were just talking about fun facts. But he was like, I don't like any music, and oh my I read gosh. that shit, and I went up to him, I was like. How do you not like any music? Like how? how I don't know. It just, it just doesn't do anything for me. And I'm like, you got like erectile dysfunction for your ears or something. Because I'll listen to like Radiohead and I'll just be like jizzing out my ears. Like I don't, yeah. I don't understand. It's incredible. Yo, yo, you know what? Speaking on Radiohead, bro. What's your favorite record by them? Probably Weird Fishes. Probably or or Exit oh, Music for your film. That's like. I mean, those two just really feel make me feel very cinematic. It gives you a cinematic. vibe like no other. It's beautiful music. Um, I like that. I what about um, if, not if, when? Let's say, you know, sometime this year, bro, you get the opportunity to work with any artist in the world. Mm-hmm. Who, who would be that one artist? That's a good question. Um... Hmm. Like I would say Mac Miller, but um, that's not gonna happen unless I like yeah, rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace, a goat. Um, definitely one of my around. biggest inspirations, like all around. But um, let me let me just take a look real quick because that's actually a good question. Um, so. I mean, my favorites right now, like, honestly, a lot of my favorites are dead or don't make music anymore, um, which sucks. But, like... That's crazy, right? J. Cole would be sick. Kendrick would be... Uh, like, Kendrick, by far, is probably, like, my number one for that. Because I grew up on Kendrick, and he's just, like... It, just my favorite all around. Like, I, I fucking love Kendrick. So, yeah, probably Kendrick. Bro, I think that that's perfect because Kendrick Lamar is very versatile in his beat selection, dude. Mm-hmm. I love it. And not only, yeah, bro, not only that, each beat bangs. Yeah, bro. no, he doesn't have a song with a bad beat, like at all. Like he just knows. He doesn't. Like it's incredible. You would definitely pair up well. No, I actually like uh, a lot of Infinity Ultra was like inspired from Kendrick type vibes. So um, he's he's definitely a big influence for me as well. Man, all in due time, bro. All in due time, for real. Oh, man. I need it. But, uh, man, King Spin Beats, is there anything that you would like the viewers to know that we didn't touch on? Um, I mean, mostly listen to Solitudism. Take a look into that. Tap into it. Um, look out for Purificata because that one's going to be um, probably like Solitudism on crack. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Overall, I would just say, you know, like, if if you do check me out or listen to it, thank you very much. Very appreciative to anyone who, who listens to my music. And, um, yeah, that's, that's really it, honestly. Like, just excited for the future. I like that. So, King Spin, bro, mad love. Thank you for blessing up her radio, dog. You seem like a great guy. You've, you and I have had... Uh, a lot of t- conversations not over the phone but we've had conversations in the, in the messages and you're just a solid dude bro you seem mad humble and you got a bright future ahead of you bro um and whenever you're ready dude 
we can get a second podcast just let me know hell yeah man thank you i appreciate everything you just said and um i'm i'm always down just let me know because this it's it's just fun as fuck to talk about this type of stuff most dev dog so anyone that's gonna be listening later definitely check out kingsman beats check out his catalog he got exclusives all over the place give him a follow on the social medias he's a great dude he's gonna do beautiful things in the future i'm telling you he's doing it right now <laughs> kingsman beats thank you for joining up here radio thank brother thanks for having me man thank you, thank you. man you got it bro you have a good one all right you too man good night good night bro